In this video, we will look at the definition of scientific writing, the scope of scientific writing, the key characteristic of scientific writing, and some tips for good scientific writing. So what is scientific writing? Scientific writing is conventionally thought of as the reporting of original research in journals through scientific papers. But scientific writing can cover a much broader range, including review papers, grant proposals, oral presentations, poster presentations, and science writing. We will look at each type of writing in detail a bit later, but first we need to identify what is the key characteristic that all these types of writing have. So this key characteristic is Clarity, which is effectively communicating ideas in the fewest short words possible. And the essence of scientific writing is clearly identifying the problem that you are trying to investigate and then clearly stating the conclusions of your study. Clarity in scientific writing facilitates communication and a piece of writing is useless unless its audience can actually understand what you're trying to say. Here is an example of a lack of clarity in scientific writing. We adopt this broad-scale approach to determine that relationships occur both at the level of the population, and hence not confounded by potential environmental variation, and or statistical non-independence of individuals, and also across individuals, because relatively recent colonization of the UK by rabbits and previous work demonstrating extremely fine-scale genetic structuring in UK rabbits over short spatial scales both make it difficult to define what constitutes a population for analysis. Comment down below what you think this sentence is trying to convey. Here is another example of a sentence from a published paper which was enough to make the author the winner of the 1998 Bad Writing Contest. The move from a structuralist account in which capital is understood to structure social relationships in relatively homologous ways to a view of hegemony in which power relations are subject to repetition, convergence, and rearticulation brought the question of temporality into the thinking of structure and marked a shift from a form of Althusserian theory that takes structural totalities as theoretical objects to one in which the insights into the contingent possibility of structure inaugurates a renewed conception of hegemony as bound up with the contingent sites and strategies of the rearticulation of power. The message that this writer is trying to relay is lost in complex and lengthy text. Once again, comment down below what you think this author is trying to say. Basically, if a piece of writing fails to be understood by its readers, then it misses the entire point of scientific writing, which is to convey ideas clearly and concisely. So now let's look more in depth at each type of scientific writing. And we're going to start off with the scientific paper. And according to the authors Robert A. Day and Barbara Gastel, a scientific paper is simply the first written and published report describing original research results. In other words, a scientific paper is a primary publication, which typically adheres to standard organizational formats. Furthermore, according to the Council of Biology in 1968, the research must first be peer-reviewed, secondly, be presented clearly so that peers can repeat the experiments and verify the conclusions, thirdly, it must be available to the scientific community, and lastly, these papers must be subject to screenings by independent scientific institutions. Unfortunately, many journals are unwilling to publish what the difference between a primary publication and a secondary publication is. And some students go through their entire education not really understanding that difference. A secondary publication is not the first written and published report describing original research results. So a review paper is a form of a secondary publication which summarizes the recent primary publications on a topic. The goal of a research paper is to identify the recent progress that has been made in the field, to shed more light on the gaps in knowledge, as well as to recommend various ideas on how to further contribute to the field. Other kinds of secondary publications include literature reviews, meta-analyses, editorials, chapters in books, and speeches and interviews. So far we've spoken about the difference between a primary and a secondary publication, but what do they have in common? They both require money. To put it simply, 
Research costs money, and this money is awarded in the form of grants. This brings us to the next type of scientific writing, which is a grant proposal. A grant proposal is a formal application to a government or private organization to obtain funds for a project. The next type of scientific writing is oral presentations. An oral presentation is a public speech in which a speaker presents his or her views on a topic based on readings or research. It may seem a bit counterintuitive to classify this as scientific writing, but successful public speaking requires careful planning, organization, and many times writing out your main talking points. Examples of oral presentations include thesis and proposal defenses, presenting at a conference, or to the general public. The next type of scientific writing is a poster presentation, which is essentially an oral presentation of research that is done with the help of a large paper poster. Finally, we have science writing, which is writing about a science-related topic for the general public to understand. Science writers research, write, and edit scientific news, articles, and features for business or scientific and technical journals and the general media. So now that we've established what exactly scientific writing is, we're going to look more in depth at some tips for good scientific writing. And these are to be concise, be organized, and use simple language. The first tip is to organize your document according to a standard format, whether that be journal instructions to the author or a grant application guideline. That means even before you start to write, you need to fully understand what is required of you. For example, many journals require authors to follow the IMRAD structure or some variation of it. And IMRAD stands for Introduction, Methods, Results, and Discussion. Within this IMRAD structure, it's essential to organize each section logically according to its purpose. For instance, the introduction should be written so that it answers the question of what is the problem being investigated? The method section should answer the question of how the problem was studied. The results section should present what are the main findings of the study. And finally, the discussion should clearly tell the reader what the findings of the study mean. The second tip is to be concise and get to the point. Time is money, so you want to convey as much information in as few words as possible in order to keep the attention of your reader. So here's an example from Purdue University illustrating the importance of being concise. After booking a ticket to Dallas from a travel agent, I packed my bags and arranged for a taxi to the airport. Once there, I checked in, went through security, and was ready to board. But problems beyond my control led to a three-hour delay before takeoff. So these three sentences can be summarized by simply saying that my flight to Dallas was delayed for three hours, thus simplifying the original text from 47 words to nine words. And on a side note, you don't want to get too attached to the words that you write. You should be able to freely chop words if necessary in order to make your writing more concise. And the last tip is to use simple language in your writing. And that means avoiding complex, flowery language in your writing. In addition to avoiding literary devices like similes and metaphors, because they defeat the whole purpose of aiming for clarity in your writing. Remember, you're writing to communicate and not to impress. To recap, in this video, we looked at the definition of scientific writing and its scope, the key characteristic of scientific writing, which is clarity, and three important tips for good scientific writing, which are being concise, being organized, and using simple language. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss any new uploads. Thanks for watching and don't forget to shoot for the stars.